Joining me, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist and host of Behind the Curtain with Jack Berkman. Catch him every Saturday night on the Radio America Network and Sunday afternoons at 2 on WMAL in Metro D.C. Also, Mark Levine, nationally syndicated radio talk show host and the Democratic nominee for the 45th District in the Virginia House of Delegates. Presidential candidate Donald Trump is threatening a third-party run if the Republican National Committee doesn't fall in line. Analysts say if Trump follows through, it could severely damage the party's chances of taking the White House. The Donald is still surging in the polls by a double-digit lead in some cases. Jack, is Trump in danger of bullying the GOP into submission? Oh, he's doing a, he's doing a lot of that, Morris. Trump is very successful. He's surprising me with his staying power. I predicted that he'd be out of this race in uh, three or four months. He's in it to stay. He, his his threat to run as a third party might just happen. I'll tell you this, Trump is succeeding in two big areas, and this is why everybody's envious of him. One, he's moving to the right, which all of them want to do, almost all of them want to do, few if any can. Second, he's sucking almost all the oxygen. What that will do, some of these second and third tier candidates, people like Carly Fiorina or Ben Carson or John Kasich, they're just going to be eliminated because there won't be any media attention for them. I think his finances and the disclosure form is going to get him in trouble. There's already questions about this uh, uh, this school that he had to teach would-be and wannabe entrepreneurs how to make money, they apparently allegedly got ripped That's off. That's an old issue. It's come, yeah. But they're going to bring it back up. Mark, do you think he's a bully? Do I think he's a bully? Well, bullying uh, the, I of, think he... Of course uh, he's a bully. That's in terms of the RNC, though. Well, of, of course he is. That's Donald Trump's signature. That's what he does. That's, I mean, his signature is you're fired, right? I mean, that's, that's who the guy is. Uh, the Donald, I think, is showing what the Republican id is. It's going deep into the Republican psyche. And we're finding out that, yes, the Republicans really do hate immigrants. Yes, they really are angry. Yes, they like someone who's willing to stick it to the man. And there's a reason why it, Trump is Trump never ahead. said he hates immigrants. Trump, that, that's a misstatement. Trump, is, it, Trump very much supports immig immigration. He said that many times. What he hates is illegal immigration. He no, wants he the said border the properly closed. Their, I don't think you can drug dealers that, and Mark. rapists. Yeah. Well, he was. Re we, we assume he was talking about the illegal immigrants. In the meantime, the RNC chastised Trump for making these comments about Senator John McCain. He's not a, a war He's hero. He's a war hero. He's a war Five hero. And a half years He's a war PSW hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured. Okay, I hate to tell you. All right, we've heard that, but it's still resonating among many people. They call it a turning point for Trump's campaign. They expected him to lose favor with his supporters, but they were wrong. Mark, are you surprised maybe people like his unfiltered message? Well, first of all, the comment is despicable. It's absolutely despicable to say that John McCain is not a war hero, just as it was despicable in 2004 when Republicans claimed John Kerry was not a war hero. John Kerry's had three Purple Hearts. John McCain's had a Purple Heart. What, what this shows, I think, is that the Republicans who are not willing to call out Trump when he considers Mexican-Americans rapists and drug dealers and not willing to call him out when he say President Obama wasn't born here, now they're starting to call him out because he's calling a Republican, not a war hero. They seem to be okay with his demagoguery, except when it's directed well, to one of them. Well, you hit the nail on the head. You said unfiltered message. Unfiltered. They, Donald they Trump like, unplugged. People love that. They like the style of delivery, just as you suggest. They like the style of delivery, and the style of deli delivery no pun intended, is trumping the message. <laughs> this is what they care about. They're, the Republican Party right now, conservatives, moderates, and even those left of center in the party, they all hate this scripted type of person. They want a Reagan. They want Reagan 1980, somebody who speaks his mind. Trump is speaking his mind. Now, the comment about McCain is ridiculous. There's many ways to attack John McCain. You certainly don't attack him on his war record. You have a, I, I share a lot of Trump's views of McCain, but you, ha you have to poke holes in his congressional record, not his war record. Other, I hate to agree with Jack, but I do there. Other Republican candidates are getting annoyed that Trump is hoarding the headlines. Even if he's only a flash in the pan. Jack, is he distracting voters from the issues your party wants to address? Uh, well, in a sense, yes, but he's also galvanizing the party. Trump is the, is the most galvanizing figure in Republican political history, maybe in a generation, maybe since Reagan. He's bringing, Trump attracts all facets of the party. He's attracting those, uh, those independents in New Hampshire. He's attracting the evangelicals in Iowa. He's attracting the Southern conservatives. He's attracting the people who want to rally for the Confederate flag. He's attracting all kinds of people on the Republican base. He probably right now, Morris, has a broader base of 
of support within the Republican Party than any of the candidates. Mark, as a Democratic strategist, this has to be great for you. It's the gift that keeps on giving. It certainly is. Listen, there's nothing Republican base likes better than an unfiltered bigot and charlatan, and they certainly love Whoa. Donald Trump. And go, go, Donald, go. I hope he runs. I hope he does well. And uh, once he doesn't get the nomination, which I don't expect, I hope he does well in his third remember party. Though, remember the most important point here. It's more than just Republicans who are ready for the unfiltered message. What Mark may not realize is many in his own party are tired of this scripted Hillary Clinton. They, they like a lot about Hillary Clinton, but they don't like her scripted, her eternal Eternally scripted nature and well, presence. the tea and crumpets and the, all of these politicians who measure all their words. It's nice to hear somebody that's totally off the wall like Trump. All right, switching gears to the Democratic side. While addressing a crowd in South Carolina, Hillary Clinton commented on the current racial tensions in the country. It's heartbreaking to read about another death of a young woman, Sandra Bland, in Texas. Another young African American life cut short. And that's why I think it is essential that we all stand up and say loudly and clearly, yes, black lives matter. Hillary was criticized for saying all lives matter weeks earlier. While a majority of African Americans do vote liberal, analysts say Clinton is having a hard time reaching out to blacks. Mark, do you think Hillary's comments were sincere? What, would, what should Democrats be doing to reach out to minorities? I do think they were sincere. I think there's an understanding all across the country, not just in the Democratic Party, that the battles between the African American community and law enforcement have to stop. And we need, for example, body cameras to protect citizens and to protect the truth. Uh, the whole point of the Black Lives Matter campaign, and some people misunderstand it, it's not that they're suggesting that other lives don't matter. What they're suggesting is that for a long time, only white lives seem to matter. Really, the campaign could be labeled Black Lives Matter too. Oh, Mark, come on. Now, this country's been practicing affirmative action for a long time. I think what that is is a desperate and pathetic attempt to pander to the black vote, to pander to the far left wing of the Democratic Party. Hillary Clinton, let's talk Turkey. Hillary Clinton is worried that without Obama at the top of the ticket, black turn Turnout will fall. Minority turnout will, will fall. They're throwing anything at the wall to try to make sure that doesn't happen. But those comments reflect a kind of pathetic and terrible racism, talking about what kind of lives matter, black lives matter, white lives Jack, matter. Jack, are you saying this there's no racism in law enforcement? Are you saying that there's no racism in law enforcement? No, there's racism America everywhere. Today? There's racism everywhere in the country. There's racism among doctors, lawyers, uh, pundits, uh, anchors, uh, people only, who dig ditches. Only among law enforcement it takes right. lives. Meanwhile, the scandals keep coming for the Hillary camp. The Justice Department has received a referral from two federal inspectors to look into the possible mishandling of classified information in Clinton's personal email account. She's still seen as untrustworthy in the polls, even though Mrs. Clinton has said she's done nothing wrong. Mark, could this latest investigation do even more damage? I don't think so. I think it's already been over-Trumped, as it were. Uh, this is a, 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 basically an investigation into the release of emails from the State Department. Remember, it's the Republicans that are pushing to release all these emails. Some of them have been retroactively classified after Hillary Clinton released them. Uh, to me, really, it's, it's just a saying, hey, slow down before we release things that we may be concerned uh, about. The, the problem, I don't agree with that, Morris. The problem is the public sees her running away. Yes. Mark can say, the Democrats will say, oh, this is just one more scandal. But to some degree, where there's a lot of smoke, there's at least a little bit of fire. This is a woman that's been involved in scandal after scandal for 20 years. Made up scandal after made up scandal. Jack, how many people were uh, were in trouble in Whitewater? How did that hurt Hillary Clinton? They investigated that criminally for, I don't know, 5, 10, 15 years. Nada. Nothing went wrong. Jack, this is going to have some legs to it until we, we wear it out, though, right? Because the, it's the political season after Yeah, there's all. no question. The bigger problem, Morris, is with the Justice Department department bottled up with people like Eric Holder and Loretta Lynch. There, there's almost ultimately no chance of any criminal prosecution. That's the problem. That's one of the reasons. I'll put in my plug for the independent counsel. That's one of the reasons I've always believed you need an independent counsel. I made that argument with a Republican president. I made it with a Democratic president. Sadly, you just there's, there's no possibility that any U.S. attorney, because they're all controlled by the president and or the Justice Department, would ever move on this. All right. Before we go, let's talk about one more fight Donald Trump got into this week with South Carolina Senator Lynch. Lindsey Graham, a day after Trump's comments about John McCain, Graham called Trump a jackass, sparking a political tit for tat. Trump then released Graham's personal cell phone number while giving a speech in his state. I don't know if it's the right number. Let's try it. 202. 228. I don't know. Maybe it's, you know, it's three, four years ago, so maybe it's an old number. 202. 228. 
So, I don't know, give it a shot. <laughs> but Graham may have gotten the last laugh with this video. In it, he demonstrates how to destroy a cell phone, including setting it on fire and, and hitting it with a golf club. Jack, would you trust Donald Trump with your number? Did you Graham know, handle this well? It amazes me. Lindsey Graham still uses the old cell phone just like I do. Kudos <laughs> to him. We're both 15 no, years phone. behind. I, I just noticed that. You know, yeah. the real issue with this, Morris, is that it shows that Trump is relatable. Giving out your cell phone number, that's something people can relate to. Trump despite being rich and powerful, can relate to the average person. I think that's what all this highlights. The other thing is, Lindsey Graham, he's getting linked to Trump in terms of Google AdWords. Every time you pull up Trump, you pull up Lindsey Graham. This might be the only shot he has in the race. Now, he's using various phones. I, I, I Hopefully, he's got some besides the, uh, the little flip phone. But, you he, know. he said those were all fake phones. They were all that, fake that phones. They were all phones. What do you make of this, Mark? He, here's the heart of it. Donald Trump has, as E.J. Dion said in the Washington Post, Donald Trump has the Republicans' number, and that's figurative and literal. He had the reason he had Lindsey Graham's number because Lindsey Graham had left him his number because he wanted a donation. He wanted to be on Fox and Friends. The Republican Party has built up Donald Trump for many, many years trying to get his wealth for their campaigns. And now I think they regret the bomb they built well, is exploding you, in their but, face. But Donald Trump has built up Donald Trump. I don't think the Republicans have much control over him. That's the whole point, Jack. Yeah, I, there, there's no question. Trump is the guy. You have to give Donald Trump the credit. Remember, as we said, Morris, Republicans are looking for something un, unscripted. Mark calls Trump a bomb. I don't think it's a bomb. I think it's a very useful weapon. It might be the only chance the Republicans have of winning the general. Remember, Trump is running right. Are I you saying, are you saying Trump's going to win left. the general election? Is that well, your prediction, Jack? I, we've endorsed no one. I think Trump is No, no not of, endorsement. Is that what you think is well, going to Well, but hear what, what I'm saying, Mark. I think you misheard. Trump is one of the few Republicans, I think, who could win the general because getting to 270, as I've said, for Republicans is extremely difficult. Trump might do it. Well, it's I'll tell you this, Jack and I season. both want uh, Donald Trump to do well. <laughs> Mark Levine, Democratic strategist, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist, the best political panel on TV. Thanks to you both. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Morris. Thank you, Morris. Thank Jack. you, Mark. Don't go away. There's more to come.